I'm still here in Devon. I'm here at Exeter St. David's. Today, I'm going to visit every station on the Avocet Line down to Exmouth. This should be a good one. Come and join me. It's a very noisy station, this. Announcement, announcement, announcement. Just light for me getting interrupted. Ah, oh, for God's sake. Never shuts up. Can't get a word in edgeways. So, Exeter St. David is one of Brunel stations opened in 1844, ever such a long time ago. It was the terminus of the Exeter and Bristol Railway, obviously been extended in all directions since then. Another day, another 150. So the service is on this line, it works once an hour, there's a limited stop service that skips some of the smaller stations like St. James's Park, and once every hour there's an all-stop service that goes to those stations. So overall it's a half hourly service, but some stations do only get hourly. Right, okay, so my first stop is going to be Digby and Salton. The station totem was really, really far away from the station, like a minute before the train arrived. So I'm having a walk to take a look-see. There's a direct link from the station to Salton Park and Ride, which is basically just off the M5. And this would be perfect place to park to use the train, but there's big signs saying Parking is for users of the park and ride bus and park and cycle permit holders only. So they really don't want you to use the park and ride here to get on a train, which feels very backwards. Like it's less than 10 minutes into Exeter from here on the train. This is backwards. This is very, very backwards. It's a massive park and ride. So I'm here on a weekday morning. It's half full. I don't know how long the bus takes from here, but I can imagine it takes longer than the train, surely? You've even got the, the station totem in the corner of the park and ride. It's almost like they wanted to try and encourage people to get on the train from here, but didn't. This could have been a portway park and ride style system where you can pick the bus or the train, but clearly not. This feels like a bit of a waste. So at the main entrance to Digby and Salton Station, there's a small car park and it is labelled as a park and ride, but you can't get many cars here. It's a little bit tucked away, so I can't imagine it gets used that much as park and ride. The station itself opened in 1995. It's a relatively new one, mainly to serve the new housing developments. They're all behind these trees. It's definitely got that 90s feel, this station. Very, very 90s. Even the paving just screams 90s. This block pave style, very, very 90s. The next train to arrive at platform one will be the 1028 Great Western Railway service to Exmouth. It's not a 150. The next station is Newport. So this is Newcourt, the newest station on the line opening in 2015. 2015 was like eight years ago. Wow. Now I'm feeling old. Has excellent views of the M5. If you like the M5, I've got a book called The Glorious M5. So I'm a big fan of the M5. I like this station because we're in the middle of a housing estate. There's no car park. It's not designed for you to drive to. It's designed that if you live here, you can jump on a train from here. We literally need more stations like this, not to generate car journeys to the stations, but just to serve the immediate area. I've noticed recently with new stations, they're often surrounded by massive car parks. You have to, if you're trying to get to the station on foot, you have to traipse across them. It's really, it's just an unpleasant experience. But stations like this, where there's no car park and it's literally designed for the local area, you walk here, you cycle here. 
there's so many new developments popping up around railway lines now and we just need to look at just putting these presumably fairly inexpensive stations next to these new housing developments to let people just get the train into town. Far too many developments are just so car centric and not even a thought is put into just getting people onto public transport. This small station on the edge of the estate is a great thing. We need more like this. Stop building massive car parks where you don't need them. So here at Newcourt, I'm going to say a massive thank you to my lovely Patreons and YouTube supporters. Your names are scrolling on the screen right now. Massive thank you to you guys for making videos like this possible. If you want to get your name onto this list, the links to do so are in the description. But thank you guys for supporting me. I'm not visiting every station in Devon as a complete series like I did with Cornwall. As fun as that was, I'm only down here for a few days. I'm just taking an opportunity as it arises to get some videos in. And considering it's coming up towards the end of November now, the weather is amazing. We are now approaching Topsham. So this is Topsham. Uh, I'm going to very briskly leave the station because I just want to go on a little bit of a walk to somewhere interesting. This nondescript little road I'm crossing right now, it's Holman Way. Gently curves away from the station. And it's actually an old railway alignment. This was a little branch line down to Topsham Quay, which I'm walking to now. But just when you get to this little corner, it's obvious that this is an old railway alignment. Now that's a very, very old footbridge. And why would you have a very, very old footbridge? over a tiny little nondescript road. You gotta look out for these things. They're nice. This is Topsham Quay, where that little branch line terminated. It wasn't a station, it was all for goods. I should, I, I should have allowed myself more time here. I've got to leave like immediately to go back to the station but in a bit I'll be heading down that way and I'm very very much looking forward to it. There's the M5X viaduct, quite an impressive viaduct in the grand scheme of things. I love this, Jen's in a happy place again. Damn it, I've got to go back to the station. Can't risk it. So Topsom seems like a nice little town, just as the um, level crossing goes down. That must mean a train is due. It's also a two platform station that's fairly unheard of on this line. It effectively forms a passing loop so that they can run the half hourly service down here. So as my next train comes in, I'm heading back towards Exeter to pick up some of the stations that are only served hourly. Next stop, St. James's Park. Oh yeah, train. Trains are better than football. They're claiming this station was improved. What was it like before? This is grim. Oh joy, it's a 150. I think we might have topped Grand Conway. They're not taking this away from me. This is the one that enthusiasts get a bit excited about because it's they try to make it out to be a private station, but it is a public station.